JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JOD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Lunchowskis. Today's the 31st of January 2022, guys. So yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this last trading day of this month, guys. So we are um, done with the first month, kind of, or should I say, or not yet, but uh, coming very very close to that um tomorrow we'll be done with the first day of the month uh, first month of the year there we go um but yeah guys as always uh we'll have a look at some of the, some of the instruments some of the instruments that we looked at last week just to see how everything's getting along and how to prepare ourselves for this week as well so um this uh, session is running as recording and and as i s mentioned before um i do apologize so <clears throat> unfortunately for now it will have to be like that so um some weeks uh, will be live and some weeks unfortunately will be as recorded um hopefully uh, that won't cause a lot of uh, problems for you um but uh, yeah uh, guys so like i said i'm i'm, try I'm recording this video uh, a little bit before my usual uh, live session so yeah um let's see let's see what we can do here but before we go into um into the charts here uh, let me just quickly read through um through our risk disclaimer so the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always i'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue Okay, so now then, um, just before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, quick um, mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, actually, uh, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course, our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis, so yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com, and uh, yep, click on the research tab right there on the top guys. So now then jumping into the charts, the first one I wanna pick up here is Nikkei 225, beautiful recovery. Um, so yep, after a, a kind of a very, very bad week uh, we had last week, um, yep, the um, the index uh, managed to rebound from this territory, from this 26,057 zone. I've marked this one before. Um, so we, my one of my levels was reached and this was the, uh, the high of the 17th of November of 2020 from which, yeah, we rebounded, pushed higher. Now, what I was talking about uh, last week was that basically if we uh, push higher, but let's say we stay somewhere um, below this 27,000 mark then, or even this 26,955 level then yep we could see another slide um, we're not really seeing that we're seeing a further push uh, north so the index is already closed of course but uh, yeah it closed nicely in the positive territory we'll keep an eye on this uh, today because the um, the index unfortunately closed very close to this area so in a way depending on how today's trading session will go through on, in Europe and the US um, if those start declining then well uh, maybe we could see Nikkei actually drifting back down here tomorrow so or should i say late tonight um so yeah uh, be very careful here and be very cautious for now even if it let's say pushes a little bit further north i mean we do have this downside line which is still kind of um which is still kind of something to keep in mind although don't i i get it it's a bit of a tentative one but nevertheless let's keep an eye on that one so there it could be the last resort here for the uh, bears to step in uh so if we push higher because the here for example at the same time we could also test the 21 day ema which if provides um, good resistance, then yep, another, like I said, it could lead to another slide. But for now, it is a bit of a, a close call here. 
Um, like I said, I'm keeping an eye on this territory. If we do stay above it, then I'll aim for this downside line. But if we don't, then well, maybe another another slide could be possible here. Hong Kong's Hang Seng. Now uh, the Shanghai Composite is closed today. I mean, in preparation for the Lunar Year uh, celebration. So yep, and it'll be closed. Um, it'll be closed today and tomorrow. Um, let me just quickly confirm that it's going to be yeah. Um, it's for sure tomorrow um, will it be closed later on let me just double check that guys uh, let me just quickly double check the calendar so yeah okay um, we had an early close here <clears throat> on the Shang on the Hong Kong Hang Seng index today it did manage to climb claw back a little bit here and some of the uh, kind of recover and kind of recover some of the losses made last week However, the only little issue here is, of course, the uh, the technical side. You can see that we are kind of stuck below this. Well, let me get rid of this downside, uh, this upside line. We're stuck below this downside line here. Um, so not really that positive looking index. Um, but of course, uh, keep an eye on some of the levels here. So, for example, one of the levels that I'm keeping an eye on is this 23,800, and uh, uh, actually, no, sorry, the 24,000 mark. That's what I'm keeping an eye on here. There we go. Um, so, I'm gonna keep uh, if if we get a break of this downside line and we get a push of that uh, psychological 24,000 mark, then yes, we could go for some uh, for some higher levels. We could maybe uh, consider this as a as a larger correction because don't forget that overall we're still trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 18th of February of, of last year. So a lot of things here should be considered. If, if this is not your favorite um, index to trade, for example, then you can just leave it, of course, uh, trade what you're comfortable with. Tomorrow the index is going to be closed. Um, and uh, yeah, um, we'll, we'll see how that's going to play out after it, it opens up. Um, it will, let me just double check very quickly, guys. I mean, the calendar on Wednesday is going to be closed as well. And I think, yep, on Thursday, we're coming back only on Friday. Friday. Yep, um, that's correct. So we are coming back on Hong. Uh, sorry, on Hang Seng. We're coming back on Friday. Um, so China will be uh, on holiday for the whole week. So okay, that's quite interesting. So let's see. Like I said, let's see if we can climb back here on 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 Friday. But a lot probably will depend on how the Europe, how Europe and U.S. will trade. Just and I think that uh, in that case, Hang Seng might just just follow kind of suit and uh, yeah just could it could just um, do whatever uh, the European and the US indices will do and talking about the European indices the German index DAX so um, here uh, we have a an interesting situation uh, we have a bit of a mess here so first of all let me get rid of the Fibonacci here no longer needed um, another thing that I'm gonna stick to here is this little hurdle is 15,296 zone because somehow it did uh, provide that support on Friday. I mean, we stayed above it, but we uh, fell below the 200 day EMA. Now, um, looking at the cash index right now, we'll, we can see that we are getting a bit of a, a boost here. And uh, yep, we are traveling back up, I think above the Mm, 15, we're currently sitting at a 15,537 mark, so that means we are somewhere on here. Oh, so that means that we're back above the 200 EMA, which means that, yes, maybe more buyers could join in and potentially drive this one higher. Higher, However, uh, let's keep an eye on this downside line, which um, is so far is the one to watch because, again, if it pushes a little bit higher but struggles to overcome this downside line, and, and yeah, that means that there could be another slide here. So be very careful. And another thing that I've mentioned before to you guys um, that um, overall, if you look at this picture here, I mean, we could be seeing something of a complex kind of a complex uh, double uh, top pattern, uh, double head here, um, double top um, with the uh, with the neckline, potential neckline, or being around here in this territory, around that psychological 15,000 mark. So, if you're a little bit looking for something a little bit more long term, then well, yeah, uh, you, you would probably need to wait here uh, because. If we do drop below, below this neckline, then yes, great news for the sellers. We could see further declines. However, for now, we're seeing a bit of a recovery, which is fine. 
can we break this downside line? That's another question. I mean, and uh, for now, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside, to be honest. Um, let's, but like I said, I'll be very cautious around here near these two EMAs, the 21 day and the 100 day and this downside line. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So good uh, news here for the buyers. Uh, the index managed to climb back above this 200 day EMA on Friday and managed to also stay above it. So that's, again, uh, that's a good sign. Uh, the cash index is currently sitting at around uh, 34,780 zones. So uh, basically above Friday's, uh, above Friday's um, high, but still below last week's high, which is roughly around that 34,816 zone. So a nice good pop above that would confirm a forthcoming higher high and we could aim for some higher levels. To be honest, for now, like I said, as long as it stays above that 200 EMA, I'm going to aim for slightly higher levels. The only thing is, of course, uh, similar as with DAX, we'll keep an eye on this downside line. This one is a bit tentative, of course, but nevertheless a downside line. So we'll keep an eye on it. If the index can overcome it, then yep, um, we could go for some higher levels. But if it cannot, then well, basically uh, that means that uh, yeah, another slide here could be possible. Another positive thing here is that uh, we're we're kind of this upside line here taken from the low the 18th of June of 2021 did provide strong uh, support last week as you can see although we had a very volatile week and I mean we were dropping heavily at one point especially on Monday here but um, yeah it still managed to climb back above this um, above this territory above this upside line so that means that the market it seems to be well it, se it seems that the market is not ready to sell off yet um, now the dollar index very quickly on that one. The yeah, it we we stayed above this area, this 96.94 zone. So that's kind of good news here for the for the buyers. Uh, we're seeing a bit of a retracement, which is nice, nice uh, quite normal to be honest. As long as it stays above this this 96.94 territory, I'm going to continue aiming higher. If it starts falling below it and then sell and then also drops below this 96.67 territory, now that's where I'm going to uh, maybe consider a, a correct corrective move here towards this upside line uh, so for now if we draw an arrow here very quickly so for now I'm, I'm still positive as long as it stays um, above this territory right here um, and like I said if it starts falling somewhere below this hurdle then well I'll aim for this um, for this upside line now jumping into gold and uh, yeah gold uh, drifted nicely to the downside and most importantly broke this uh, broke this little kind of uh, kind of triangle pattern I would say or hey, let's put it this way it broke this upside line uh, taken from the low the 30th of September of last year and uh, it continues to stay below it so for now to be honest looking at this it's not really looking quite positive and uh, I'm going to continue aiming lower, especially even if it drops below the, uh, the, the the current lowest point of January. Well, the current probably will be the lowest point unless it drops below it today. So if it drops below this, then yeah, we'll create a new low for January. But for now, I'm keeping an eye on the 1778 zone. If we drop below it, then my next target is this upside line taken from the low the 31st of March of 2021. Uh, WTI oil. So very quickly on this. Um, so WTI oil is yeah. It's uh, yeah. Last week we saw it pushing uh, above the upper side of the of this rising channel pattern. Um, <clears throat> But it kind of failed to uh, fail to stay above it. So now we're seeing another push to the, to the upside. We're testing the upper bound here. Can we go ahead and break it again and and stay above it? Well, that's another question. For now, I'm, I would say I'm going to be very careful here because it's struggling to. Uh, like I said, to struggle, it's struggling to stay above this. So it keeps on flirting with it, but it's not really doing much. So. If this continues to hold, um, to be honest, we could see that nice little uh, corrective move lower. However, um, as I mentioned before, and I'll probably stick to the same idea, although maybe I could be missing out on some of the levels here or some of the on the bit of area here, but 
I rather uh, be safe and, than sorry and to be honest I will keep an eye on this area right here because this is somewhat of a neutral one for me. Um, I might reevaluate everything again depending on how this is going to trade but at the moment it's not really kind of um, showing much kind of uh, let's say reassurance for me here so in any in any way I'm keeping an eye on this barrier instead this like I said this upper side of the rising channel because if it, if it breaks um, and if it stays above it uh, if the, the commodity stays above it then yes I'll aim for some higher levels. Uh, BTC USD. So um, this, just a quick update on this one continues to trade below this downside line. So in a way, everything's kind of still um, leaning a little bit more towards the downside unless we finally get a break of this downside line. But so far, we're not really seeing that. Um, of course, the fact that we're kind of we're, we came again closer to it, um, that of course uh, kind of gives maybe a little bit of hope here for the buyers. However, the moment we from just going purely from the technical side here, I mean, we can we can see that it's not really working working out well here for for the buyers. And uh, to be honest, I mean, if it if it's kind of if it stays somewhere below this thirty seven thousand three hundred eighteen zone, then well, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for 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 lower levels again, at least towards this thirty two thousand eight hundred fifty territory right here. Um, jumping into a few pairs, AUD USD. So yeah, uh, we rebounded. Um, now this is the annoying bit here. Here is that uh, we yeah last week we dropped and stayed below the 0 0.6993 territory right here, but um, yeah today we're seeing a nice rebound here. So okay I, would, I can say that um, right this is not really working out as 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 it is I would like it to be working out but hey oh, well again what can I do? Uh, not everything is kind of uh, you know working in my favor now. Um, the only thing is that if this decides to go maybe for a bit of a, a retracement, a larger retracement here, um, what can we do here is we can keep an eye on a tentative downside line taken from the high of the 13th of January. So something like this here guys I mean or actually even better some would think like around the likes of this um, again it's a very tentative line don't get me wrong I mean probably you're more, more better off to actually to kind of stick to some of the levels here instead because this is all just kind of uh, not very clear um, so if you're looking for uh, for some upside on this one probably just at least wait for a push back somewhere above this area uh, above this um, 0 0.71 30 zone if we do get if we do climb above it then yes we could uh, we could go for the upside we could go for some higher levels but if we we struggle with this downside line and this let's say hurdle then well I mean maybe another slide here could be possible in general I, in order for me let's say to move lower I would actually prefer to wait for a drop below the 0 0.6993 territory right here this one the lowest point of December and then yes again if we do drop below the lowest point of December yes I'll aim for the downside um, AUD CAD here uh, we have a um, yeah pair which is uh, showing that oil is a little bit of st well remains on the stronger side so yep uh, Canadian dollar here is actually enjoying the moment um, against the Australian dollars so um, the fact that we dropped and stayed below the 0 0.8972 territory which is the lowest point of December that's great uh, for the sellers I mean this kind of gives them a little bit more reassurance I would say if it continues to trade below the 0 0.8972 zone then yes I will I'll continue aiming lower my next target then is this one, the 0 0.8806, marked by the inside swing high of the 31st of March of 2020, guys. For the upside, it's pretty straightforward. I need to see a push back above the 0 0.9056 territory right here in order to climb higher. Uh, USD CAD. So uh, this one we have, uh, yeah, we have, we can see that the dollar, the DXY kind of uh, US dollar did kind of slow down a little bit, um, and the stronger oil uh, kicked in here and helped Canadian dollar to regain some of the losses here against the US dollar. Um, and uh, yep, uh, we're seeing a nice little corrective move lower. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, at the moment, I'm considering this as a temporary correction, and I would say if it um, if it stays somewhere above all of all of its EMAs here. 
here, uh, all, or at least the 21 day EMA, then yeah, I'll continue targeting the upside. For now, I'm even we could see a bit of a, a larger, maybe a larger correction here to the downside. But as I said, if it stays somewhere above that 21 day EMA, I'll continue aiming higher. For the downside, uh, this is what I need to get rid of this downside line. For the downside, I would need to see a drop below this highlighted area, uh, which is roughly around that 1.2608 and the 1.2620, uh, so in between those levels, um, a nice drop below that, yes, could uh, lead to some mm, to some lower levels because at the same time we would be placed below all of the EMAs on our daily chart here. Uh, USDCHF very quickly on that one and uh, yeah, continues his journey north, so that's good for the buyers and uh, yep, for now I'm still aiming for this upper side of the range here. If you remember, I mean, a while ago we were, I was talking talking about this area, we were very close and I said, wait for it, wait, uh, because we need that confirmation break first. Um, and until we get that, yep, uh, we cannot really, you know, go lower here. And this is exactly what I meant. So we instead we rebounded and pushed higher and uh, look at this. I mean, we broke this downside line and uh, we're continuing to aim for this, for this area right here. So for now I'm aiming only for that. I'm not dragging this one much higher, but uh, yeah, we, let's, let's see how this is going to play out. Uh, GBP USD very quickly on this. So yeah, um, looking at this picture, uh, we can see that we are, uh, we found some support near this 1.3375 zone. So that's uh, okay. So that's good news for the, maybe for the buyers. However, um, we're still, I mean, we're, we're seeing a bit of a recovery. Even if we do recover a little bit more, I would say as long as it stays somewhere in below this downside line here, I mean, we will continue uh, aiming, we will continue aiming lower. So basically something like this here could still be possible. And if, for example, if DXY continues to rally, then well, I mean, this is where uh, this is where this pair could uh, continue, continue sliding. So, um, so yeah, let's see how this is going to play out, guys. Um, we do have the, another one thing to, for sure is to keep an eye on the data. Um, this. Mm, the data this 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 week and on um, let me just quickly double check I think uh, yeah on Thursday we do have the BOE coming out so with interest rate decision they're expected to increase their rate um, but again let's see of course how this is gonna play out most likely they will but yeah if um, if we do see an increase we might see a bit of a jump however um, I'm not really saying that you know this is good this could lead to a huge you know rally in GBP USD but um, be kind of, uh, yeah, be very careful, uh, because the pop higher might be kind of a temporary one. And if the XY remains on the stronger side, then, you know, we can still see this pair drifting lower, uh, Euro JPY very quickly on this guys. So yeah, um, beautiful rebound from this upside line. So that's great. Um, keeping an eye on this one for now, um, keeping, I'm going to redraw this downside line here. Um, so I'm going to keep an eye on this upside line for now. It's, uh, it played out nicely here. Um, if we do drop eventually below it and we drop below the lowest point of last week, which is roughly around here in this 128.25 zone, then yes, I'll aim for the downside. If we don't, then for now, there is still hope for the bulls. However, um, we do have this, uh, these EMAs right here. So probably I would stick to maybe a push above all of the EMAs and then I would go for some, for some higher levels or at least up until this downside line taken from the high of the 20th of October. And finally, your USD guys. So yep, here uh, we saw the pair drifting lower, nicely lower below this highlight territory. I spoke about this and uh, yeah, I would say pretty straightforward to be honest. If it stays below this highlighted area, then we'll continue aiming lower. If it climbs back above it, then this is where it will force me to kind of take maybe a bit of a neutral stand because maybe we'll go for a larger correction here because we do have this downside line still uh, to keep an eye on. And uh, yeah, I mean, e although, yeah, we could we could see some, uh, maybe a stronger move higher here. Still, this could be all classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of selling. Uh, so if you're looking for some upside, then well, at least wait for a break of this downside line here. For now, I'm leaning still towards the downside if the 
the pair continues to trade below this highlighted territory, which is roughly um, below between the 1.1168 to 69 and the 1.1186 levels. So guys, that's it for this session. I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for joining in and watching this recorded session. And like I said, this, for this week, we will have these sessions as recorded. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you very much for you know, watching this. And I really appreciate your views, your likes, your comments, guys, I really do. So have a wonderful trading day. Stay safe and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.